So what is in the box? Oh, you were the box. What was in the box? Some time ago, I had an absolute blast with the T-Sauce 1911 Tank Commander in 9mm. I'd gotten my hands on that thing and shot it, me and my son. We just took it out and blasted with it. I actually took it to a backup gun match where I shot several stages with it. And in my video, I said, hey, let's do the most gushing unpaid review in the history of gushing unpaid reviews. So having thoroughly enjoyed that T-Sauce 1911 Tank Commander, when this one right here popped up the other day, this is the T-Sauce 1911 Stingray chambered in 45 AARP. I kid, I kid. No, it's 45 ACP. But this thing right here has got several styling cues, and like I said, it just sat in that gun case and just stared at me, and I had to take this thing home. So that gun store actually wound up owing me a little bit of money. And so what I did was I just said, I'll take that and the remainder in cash. So yes, I do have my hard earned dollars invested in this one. So this one, if this thing doesn't run, we're throwing it straight under the bus. But if it does run, we're going to have a great deal of fun. So I haven't actually shot this one yet. This is going to be a first looks and first rounds video. So the first thing that really caught my mind or my eye was this bobbed, mainspring housing i always loved ever since i've seen a bobbed mainspring housing i love the look and i've had a few of them through the years but now this one right here this thing came in at a very attractive price all of my bobbed mainspring housing guns that i've had always started in the four digits and that was before inflation so this thing was well into the we want to say about 600 bones number this is 2023 that's likely to change in the future a lot of times i don't like to mention price because somebody in a couple of years they're oh it's not 600 bones no more i don't get know where you're getting your numbers well it's 2023 buddy future you <laughs> the number is probably going to change but yeah this thing has got several killer features once i saw it i thought it looked like an ed brown the cobra carry which they actually list on the website the ed brown they actually use the trademark for the Bob Spring Mainspring housing. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and look at the website and see what it says. So the Stingray 45 adds more firepower to the concealment series from TSOS, featuring a machined aluminum frame with the signature Ed Brown bobtail cut. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're putting the little trademark R there. That minimizes the printing when concealed carrying and reduces weight. This feature packed 1911 pistol come equipped with many custom tier features and refinements at an unbelievable price point so let's give you a close look at this thing before we take it out and blast it and boom here we go we're going to start off with this locking case it looks like you could fly with this case for some reason that was a really big deal with the tsos tank commander the 1911 tank commander in nine millimeter when i made that video but uh let's go ahead and open this thing up well, actually we've got a sticker here this product can expose you to lead, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer. Everything in California gives you freaking cancer. So here we are. We've got a trigger lock. We've got our bushing tool. We've got our extra magazine, magazine in the gun. And these magazines are made by Metgar. I really like a Metgar magazine. I picked up another one the other day that actually has a uh, the second amendment written on it. And I thought that was pretty cool. So here we go, we've got uh, our first mag out. It's nice and oiled. I guess they wanted that thing to go for the ride. Of course, here we go. Here is our Stingray. So now our Stingray has got these really nice sunburst grips. These are kind of a, uh, looks like a G10 is what I'm bet betting they are. They've got what VZ calls the super scoop. That way you can get in here and hit the mag release. And boy, that mag just ejected positively. Of course, this is another Metgar mag. We've got eight rounds in each mag. So one thing that I really, really liked about this that I mentioned earlier is this bobbed mainspring housing. I always just like the feel of that. I've got a nice little pump right here that just fits right on that. And it gives me a really solid purchase when I'm shooting them. So now as for sights, it is a simple three dot setup. 
if I like the gun and the reliability and the accuracy and everything is all there, I'll probably wind up finding something that is compatible with this and swapping this over to, uh, let's say, some excess tritiums or tritium. I don't even know how you say that. Maybe some fiber optics or something like that. So hopefully this thing works out. But yeah, this thing is definitely a looker. One of the comments when I put this on Instagram, my buddy, he said, uh, that looks like an Ed Brown Cobra carry. And I'll be daggum if it doesn't look like an Ed Brown Cobra carry. So I'm hoping this thing will absolutely, you know, just be killer and I'll have uh, the looks of the Cobra carry for a fraction of the price. So I'm loving these serrations here. The serrations, they've got a fish scale look. I've always really liked that fish scale look. I had it on a Kimber previously. Now the Kimber, um, it wound up being kind of a turd and I wound up moving it down the road and it ultimately turned into a revolver that I really love by trading around. But uh, I enjoyed the checkering on it, but like I said, the Kimber just didn't run worth a crap. So fingers crossed for this one, I'll have this checkering on a gun that runs worth something. But now we've got a skeletonized hammer or trigger. That skeletonized trigger looks really nice. Our hammer is skeletonized. We've got an extended beaver tail here on our safety. And then I always like it when we have that extra bump on the safety, the grip safety. That way when you grab it, it is very positive and you make sure that you've got a good, good uh, depressing on that grip safety there. But now it's fully shrouded back here. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about any hammer bite unless we do something stupid. <laughs> but uh, then we look here, we've got nice little minimal flares there on the magwell. And now this frame, this frame is actually aluminum. It's very light. I took the slide off of it and compared this to a regular 1911 frame and the weight savings was pretty decent there. But now our finish is very nice to the touch. I really like this black slide. The finish here is a bit of a matte, matte kind of satin feel. And we don't have any checkering on the front strap, but it'd be cool if we at least had some kind of lines or some kind of checkering there. But I mean, it's still, the grips are still pretty grippy. So I don't think that's gonna be a concern. So now as for the trigger pull, let's check this out. Nice and light. Get a reset really short. Boom, I like it. So there it is from the other side. Reset, trigger pull. I'll put my findings right here. So of course we've got a ambidextrous safety. So the safety is really nice and thin on both sides here, but uh, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you're sitting pretty there. Our release is just standard. Our slide release is just standard, but they've recessed it back here so it takes that bump off the side, which I kind of like that for being able to index and not having a bump under my finger. I like that. So, you know, like I said, finger off the trigger until you're ready to go. You index it right there and it just gives a really nice feel. So what we have here is we do not have a full length guide rod. I don't have any concerns about that myself. There's been a, a, a bit of an argument I've seen over the years, full length versus not. I don't really care. I just, uh, you know, as long as the gun runs, it doesn't bother me. So let's go ahead and shoot this thing real quick. So here we go. We got first shots. I've actually got an identical Metgar mag. If that will focus, it has the second amendment on it. So this is just like the two mags that are in the box with it. But I figured we'd just go ahead and run it since it was identical. Let's see how this thing goes. So first shots, let's see. Huh, that was odd. So editor me, after the fact, I'm sitting here looking at this and what actually happened was I've never seen it before in a 1911 round or magazine, but that last round kind of geysered out and sat on top of it. Like I said, I'd never seen it before. So it just kind of blew my mind then. But I want to say that that wasn't the factory supplied mag, even though it's a Metgar mag, it wasn't the factory supplied mag. What you're going to notice is the next two run perfectly. So 23 out of 24 rounds fired perfectly. 18 of, or well, no, 16 of those were the factory supplied mags. So we're going to call that good. Mag two. So 
So let's give you an up close of this thing real quick. So there we go, I'm digging this thing. So all right guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the Stingray, if you will. Go ahead and check out the link tree links down below. That helps put ammo back in guns and gasoline back in gas tanks so I keep turning on the camera for you. Y'all have a wonderful day, I love you, and I think I'm gonna love this little Stingray. We'll see you later.